thank you very much. This session, How Not to Be a Social Media Magpie, and the reason, if I'll come on to why, I've got, why magpie it is and why the image I use. Um, but just to get an idea, obviously this is a conference about using internet and all things web-based. How many of you guys are actually using social media in your business right now and kind of getting some use? I, I know you, you put your hand up. I'm not going to pick on you. You, are, you, you said earlier, and I've kind of only been using Pinterest for a couple of weeks. Um, any of you guys completely starting from scratch and haven't even dabbled? Right, okay, good. So this is probably about just a couple of you and the rest of you kind of doing a little bit already. Well, look, social media is nothing new. It's been around for, God, at least three years now. Um, yeah, it's really quite old-fashioned stuff to use in your business now. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's been around for a little while um, and more and more businesses starting to use it. But the main problem that people end up having is, is they start to use it based on what everyone tells them they should be using it at networking events. And they come to conferences like that and everyone says, oh, you should be using Pinterest, oh, you should be using Twitter. And the problem with social media is because lots of people talk about it, it's very easy to get, up, get caught up with what I call the shiny, shiny. Hence my magpie reference um, and my book I wrote early this year, Shiny, Shiny, How to Stop Being a Social Media Magpie. Um, this is the real danger of everything that glitters is not gold. Um, does anybody, those of you who have been using Twitter last year, do you remember clout scores? They're kind of still around a little bit, aren't they? But anybody got caught up with the hype of clout scores? Anybody not know what I'm talking about, clout scores? <laughs> clout scores, oh we're going to be online. Clout scores were these, um, well, they still exist, to be honest, is that a clout score um, gauges how popular you are in the social media hemisphere. Um, universe and so um, people starting out might have a clout score of 10-15% and as you've got more and more people who are following you and more and more people oh it's on there isn't it just needs brightening up a bit um, and as more and more people got um, you know more followers and were tweeting more and more and more updates their clout scores started to go up and there was a bit of ego going around especially last summer time of people going oh, I've got 67% quick I must go and check my clout scores and to be honest, this is where you get caught up with all the shiny, shiny stuff that really does not make, yeah, hey, I've got pictures, woo. Um, things that, that really don't make money for your business. Um, and in fact, actually, I think clout scores, even though some people still do use them, um, have got completely found out when big spam accounts were getting very, very high clout scores when actually no human beings interacted on them at all. Um, so this is the real danger with all these sites. It's very easy to get talking to somebody and they say, oh, you must go and use the latest new tool and off you ping again. And then you end up running around like a headless chicken or more likely what I suggest is the magpies flying around, gathering all these shiny objects, bringing them back to the nest and going off again. When actually these shiny objects aren't actually helping you grow your business, make, your more, make more money and get more customers at the end of the day. So, this is what I want to demonstrate um, in this session. Um, so briefly, who am I? I'm Karen Skidmore. Um, I started up in business in 2004, originally as a life coach. Um, I wasn't a very good life coach. Um, I wasn't very good at giving impartial advice and helping people with their big life problems. I'm a bit too impatient for that. Um, I, so I didn't start off very well, but I had big plans. I had big plans to be a big life coach. Um, and when I realized how much work had to be involved in selling yourself, I came from a corporate background, 11 years corporate experience in selling recruitment systems and advertising and four week commission cycles. And I decided to turn my back on all of that and be a life coach. Um, I realized you had to put some business principles into your business and start thinking about it in business terms. What I do now, um, I help people with their small business models. Um, I help people create, turn services into products. Um, my predominant marketplace is coaches and trainers and people sell services, but I help them put together and actually go and sell products on their website, help them set up automated marketing systems, emails, um, opt-in reports, developing systems, where they can actually run their business 24 seven and still have a life. You know, Friday's afternoon off to play golf, possibly long weekends. You can can do it when you run your own business. Um, I'm chief web geek at the Web Tech Club, which is a uh, marketing club that I run on a monthly basis. It's been going now for about 18 months. Um, and I'm also author of The Shiny Shiny. And I'll, uh, Zoe, who very kindly asked me to come and speak here today, I've got some copies of my books at the back. So if you want to come and um, buy one, I'll let you know how you can do that. Um, cash always is king. 
Um, right, what you're going to get, I'm going to fire out the three dangers to using social media and make sure that you are avoiding them and got some tips and techniques to get through it. I'm going to give you five strategies on the time suck and actually is, this is what people tell me, the biggest problem to using social media is time. Is that about right? Yeah. Yes. How many of you spend all day on Twitter if you use Twitter? Come on, admit it. Right, there you go. Thank you. Very brave hand going up at the back there. Um, and the critical step to take if you want to take if you want social media to grow your business. All right, does that make sense? Does that give you something to go on today? Good. So, write this down. Oh dear, that didn't work very well. It, what it should say, <laughs> this is it because it's going on the feed. All that glitters is not gold. All right, this is really really important to remember. This is just because someone said it's a fab new toy, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the thing that's going to explode your business. Um, the real danger, and the first real danger, is the spray and pray. So I suddenly realized the few slides are out in here because I changed them on there. Anyway, I digress. Um, the first danger to really any marketing, this isn't just social media marketing. I'm talking about any marketing here. Let's, let's get rid of all of the technology and internet and e-commerce and actually just talk about marketing per se, is the spray and pray approach. Anybody come across this term before? Yeah? It's been around for a little while. I used to use it back in my days, um, selling recruitment solutions and, uh, and four-week commission cycles, where you literally just get some marketing and get some letters and you send some emails out and you just send them out to whoever you feel might be interested in what you do and then you just sit there and pray. I think someday somebody might actually buy what I actually want to sell. Um, and this is a real problem with social media because a lot of people, because it's the, you get caught up with the technology, don't you? With Twitter and Facebook and knowing which widget and plugin goes which where, you get very, very into how things actually get set up. And you actually forget, in fact, who, um, I forget the guy who was doing, I, I dropped into the um, pay-per-click session. I don't think he's in, in this one today. Um, and he had a real great focus on uh, pay-per-click session this morning about making sure that you think about what the end result is. And it's exactly the same with social media. You've got to think about why you are doing it rather than just sitting there and spraying and praying. So what you've really got to think about is what your goals are, what you're actually thinking about achieving out of your social media, and then making some decisions about how you're going to use the tools. Okay, so that's a really, really important thing. So before any of you, so the guys at the front who said, you know, I haven't started using it, before you go and set up Twitter accounts and Facebook, because some of these things might not be right for you in your business, you've got to take a step back and think, well, who am I? What's my business representing? And the most important thing is, who am I targeting? Who do I want to go out there and engage with? Who do I want to go out there and talk to and speak to so I can start having a relationship with them and actually start bringing them back into my website and maybe one day they might want to buy from me and spend some money with me because that's the ultimate aim of the game. So if you do not know who you are targeting, you will be spraying and praying. You might as well go out to Woking High Street. I'm sure it'll be very busy out there at lunchtime. Go and sit outside and stand outside the local um, ice cream parlor or coffee shop or whatever and just stand there and hand your business card out. Just do that all day because you'll have a better impact than just going onto social media and just setting your accounts up and just thinking, I don't know, somebody might read a tweet one day and click through to my website. Okay, it's much, much, you're much better off thinking about who you're targeting and then making a decision about what social networks you're actually going to be a member of and how you're going to engage with them. The second danger, this is the thing I really wanted to spend time on, is the time wasting. Um, a couple of hands went on the back when I said about time wasting. Who uses Twitter here? Just stick your hands up if you actually use Twitter. I know Thomas does. <laughs> With zealous, lots of tweets. Okay, good. So most of you here use Twitter. How many of you have Twitter running all day on your PC or Mac? Well, well, I, okay, thank you very much for being very honest. Just one of you. No one else would like to admit that they have Twitter running all day in the background. Um, do you by any, um, Thomas does. Do you by any chance um, have your notifications pinging you and letting you know that you've got a new tweet coming in? Yeah, and then when you get the ping, do you go in and check to see who's tweeted you? Yeah, okay. Oh, I, I've, I've got the T-shirt. I was like that once upon a time. Um, this is where it gets very, very addictive. It's very easy to think, oh, especially with Twitter, I've got to be on it all day to be engaging with people because people tell me I've got to be a human being on Twitter. I've got to make sure I'm talking to people. So if I'm not on Twitter, I'm missing the opportunities. 
And this is the real problem. You get the notifications going off, the pings, you've got your iPhone or your Blackberry or whoever you're using, your smartphones, and you can be there constant. And, and it absolutely can kill your business within a few weeks because it takes your focus off what you're doing with your business growth and thinking about the products that you're selling, the website development that you might be doing or the, the events that you might be going to, the campaigns that you're setting up, the offers that you're doing for Christmas time this time next year because you're spending all day using social media. So what can we do? Strategies to avoid the time suck. The first off is you've got to be very clear in your objectives. If you do not know what you want Twitter or Facebook or YouTube or Pinterest or LinkedIn or whatever site you're using, you want it to do for your business, then like I said, you just might as well go and stand on the street corner here around the corner and just hand your business cards out all day or just give out samples to anybody who might be interested because somebody might buy from you. You've really got to take the time out and think, right, if somebody is to click through from a tweet or from my Twitter profile into a relevant page on my website, what's, what's the next stage in the journey? Where do I want to take them? Is it to get an email address? Is it to actually buy something? What's the journey? So you've got to be very, very clear on the objectives. You've got to switch it off. <laughs> switch it off, lady in the back there. <laughs> it's okay to switch Twitter off most of the day, to be honest. I mean, how I, and I use Twitter a lot. I used to use a Twitter an awful lot. But the most I'm actually physically on Twitter nowadays, I would say, is about 10, 15 minutes a day maximum. Once you start knowing what you're doing and you've got your strategies in place, you only need to be in there checking to see what replies, seeing if there's any messages backwards or forwards, a quick scan down through the newsfeed, and then you're back out again. You do not have to be on social media all day. Does that make people feel a little bit happier? especially you there going, oh, thank you, yes. I'm giving you permission that you can switch it off, unplug it, get away from it. Um, a lot of businesses I know will tweet all weekend as well. Anybody tweet at the weekends and try and keep things going seven days a week? No, you tell, oh, you did, right. It's, you know, if, it, if that's your client base, then maybe you do need to be on the weekends, but some of you may want to just put things on, a little bit of autopilot, and take the weekends off, because if you're on it all the time, it can absolutely suck the living daylights out of you. Having said, switch it off, you don't want to ignore it. You want to think about scheduling it into your diary. And this is what I do, and this is what I teach my clients to do, it's what I teach in the Web Tech Club, is actually thinking about, okay, well, I don't want to just ignore it. I've set up a Twitter account. I can't just dip in once a week because Twitter is expecting responses back from you very quickly. But if you schedule it into your day in a slot that's going to fit in with your, what you're doing, um, whether you're writing that campaign, planning the next product launch, whenever it is, if it's in your diary that you're going to check Twitter, I don't know, 11.30 in the morning, uh, 4 o'clock at the end of the day, tea time. Think about the times when a lot of people are on Twitter um, and it's like being around a water cooler. You know, back in... Is anybody still in corporate life, by the way? Anybody still chained to the desks? No, you all left, left corporate life. But remember corporate life? We used to just hang around the water cooler or the photocopy machine or the tea room. And those are the times that people do tend to dip into Twitter. So you do think about those break times, that pre-lunch, post-lunch, tea time, evening time, there's a football match on, X Factors on TV, whatever it is. Um, think about scheduling in your diary about actually making sure that you do make the proactive effort to go into your Twitters, your Facebooks, your Pinterest, whatever, it, whatever social network platform you're using. How many of you plan your content? <laughs> no, Claire's at the front going, no, I know I should do. Anybody here plan your social media content? Okay, why, any out of interest, why does anybody not think about planning content? Because you don't think you need to? Um, no. stop, thinking. stop thinking, yes. <laughs> Because when we go on Twitter, it can be very reactive. We start thinking, what am I doing right now? Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll tweet what I had for lunch, which is great. It's good to do the personal stuff. I'll tweet what I'm doing later on today. You're always in the now, all the time. And this, again, what sucks you into Twitter. I use Twitter a lot because I think Twitter is the main problem when it comes to time suck. So it sucks you into the now all the time. And this is why I say it drags you down to the bottom and it can completely destroy your business. And we're literally within a few weeks. If you take a step back and start planning your social media updates, and more important, actually thinking about the content. Now, I'm no angel. I don't have a shiny halo, and I don't do this every single month. But when I'm in a good month, I will start. So I'd, I'll probably do sort of two months out of every four. I will go, oh, I'm being a bit perfect now. And the other two, the other two months kind of go a bit haywire. 
But when I'm in a good moment, I will spend the first Monday of each month just literally an hour, an hour and a half, absolute maximum, thinking about where my business is going, what promotions have I got on, what blog articles am I writing, well, how does that relate to my Twitter updates, my, my Facebook updates, what have I got to schedule on, what have I got to think about in week four, what have I got to think about in week three. And immediately then you can start to have little patterns to your campaigns. You start thinking about your launches, your special offers. We're coming up to the summer season. What special offers are you doing over the summer season? Are you hitting something for the Jubilee week, for example? Think about um, what your content is, and then you can be a couple of steps of yourself. Because if you can actually plan your articles, plan your tweets, plan your updates, plan your images that you might be showing on Pinterest, you can take control and actually get yourself back in the driving seat and make sure you're controlling social media rather than social media just sucking the time out of you. Make sense? It just takes, it just needs a bit of self-discipline to take a step back. It doesn't have to be Monday morning. You guys might not do it on a Friday afternoon. It could be a Saturday morning, Sunday evening. Well, you've got to find out what time suits you. But actually take that time out, an hour maximum, just to think about what the calendar is. Some of you might find you have different themes of different days. Monday is Manic Monday Day, tips on how to make you know, your customer's life better to start the week. It could be Tuesday um, is something else. Wednesday is about um, going on holiday. Think about the products and you might, that might help you start to plan your content on the different themes. And the fifth strategy is automate. Now, how do people feel about automating social media? Do people, a few grimaces in the back there through the shining lights. It's a bit of a dirty word, automate, isn't it? Anybody feel that it's a bit bad to discover that actually a Twitter account or Facebook account is roboticized? I don't know if that's quite a white word, but you know, I just made it up. Anybody feel they get a bit cheated if they feel things get automated? Right, thank you. So that's the point. Claire just said, not if it's of value. Because I think there's a lot of um, negative talk about automating. And it, then the, I think we, we spoke, mentioned the words, things like spammers this morning, I think in Suzanne's session, um, and especially when we talk about email marketing. And spamming is unwanted stuff. And if you're going to go and automate your Twitter account and your Facebook account and your Pinterest account to the point that you're just sending out drivel and just sending out content just in the hope that somebody is going to see something and you're doing the spray and pray, spray and pray mentality, then of course you're going to be coming across as a bit of a spammer. People are not going to want your content and they're not going to follow you and they're just, it's just all going to crumble around your, um, around your eyes. So when I'm talking about automating, it's taking that step back. So when I said about switching off, about diarising, about planning your content, once you've planned your content, you can actually then think about how to automate. Um, and the important thing is, I like to say, it's about sprinkles. It's about putting your, your, your little sprinkles on top of your, your cakes rather than doing the whole lot all the time. You've got to be present at times. So if you are sprinkling your auto updates and actually sending things out, so things are going out throughout the day and then you're dipping in at, for 10 minutes at 11.30, 12 o'clock and maybe another 10 minutes at the end of the day, you're still being human. And I know the big, and I've had big debates with people on Twitter about automating, and I've had people, how dare you suggest anybody should automate? That's sacrilege. It's just awful. You should never be automating on the sites of Twitter. You've got to be a human being. And yet what I find, my personal experience, is that if I actually have things going out during the day, people see the stuff, they send me a message. By the time I come in, there's some human conversations going on, and as long as I'm responding back to it in my little 10-minute sessions, everyone's a winner. It generates the real human engagement for me to be really human back again. But it's just not right to expect business owners like you guys to be on social media all day. So what you, what you have to compensate for is you, oh, excuse me, you have to automate. But it's automating it in the right way. Now, I'm going to come on to some tips on how to automate the other one. The third danger is being too scared to sell. There's a few sort of smiles in there. Anybody feel that they shouldn't sell on social media? Don't sell on social media. You're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be human and you're supposed to be able to share information. Um, absolutely. And it's not about being a spammer here. It's not about chucking your stuff out there and being irrelevant. But too few people will spend hours putting stuff on Pinterest saying, yes, it's got my, you know, it's number three or number four traffic to my website. But then where's the conversions? People will spend, I spend all day on Twitter and I've got 7,000 people who follow me. Woo! 
Well, how many people are buying into your products? How many people are getting your special offers? What a lot of too many people do is they try and be so nice on social media that they forget to take someone down you know, by the hand and light your way onto maybe first base, second base, or you know, I'm not going to get into turning into dating and, and sleeping with your customers or anything like that. We'll, st we'll stay away from that analogy. Um, but it, you do need to help your customers and your clients take the next step. Because if you end up being too nice, we end up being very British about it, don't we? We go, oh, it's lovely, very lovely company, very lovely products, but then no one buys what you're actually offering. So you've got to go out there and sell, but sell it in a way that's going to be of useful to your clients and customers. So this is how you do it. And this is the number one critical step to take, which I, I, it, I see so few businesses actually do. And this is give your fans and followers the opportunities to share their email address with you. This, is, this is your, should be your primary objective when you're going out and using social media. People sometimes go too far and they go at the hard sell and all they do is send out a whole load of links trying to flog their spe special offer. And trying to sell on Facebook, for example, is really hard work. I mean, that is very, very difficult to do. But if all you're asking to do is to say, here's an opportunity to have an email address given to me, and in return, I will give you something of value, you can start that relationship. Matt's session this morning kicked off the conference nicely about building relationships and how to do email marketing successfully. And this is what most people are forgetting to do when they're using the likes of Twitter, Pinterest, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and all the rest. They are not giving their fans and followers an opportunity to share the email address because this is where the selling begins. This is where the relationship, this is kind of like the first base that you can then start developing the relationship on the email. If they don't like you and they unsubscribe, that's fine. That's no problem. But that's absolutely the critical step to take. So how do you do this without being sleazy? Because I think this is where a few people get a bit worried about, well, this is all very well, but I don't want to be going out there and hardcore selling on Twitter and Facebook because everyone tells me I shouldn't sell. So you've got to make sure it's relevant to your target client, your target customer, whatever you call them. I know different businesses call them clients and customers. But who is it that you're trying to engage with? And I think there's a difference. Is it who are you trying to engage with and who are you trying to go out and sell to? Okay, who do you want to engage with? What is relevant to your target customer? What's going to interest them? Is it a top tip sheet? It sounds a bit sort of cheesy now, lots of people doing it, but it could be with your client base. Is it a discount voucher? Is it a special two for one? You've got to think about what's right for your business. It's got to be valuable. And I don't mean diamond crusted Dubri, gold plated, whatever. It's got to be valued to your actual customer. And this is where you've really got to spend the time on identifying who you want to go and focus on. Because if you don't do that bit, all of this becomes really hard work, doesn't it? But if you've done the market research, and I say market research sounds very grand, but even if you just phone up your last 20 customers and start asking them about what they like, why did you come in onto my website? Why did you buy my product? What was it that was interested you? What other stuff can we help you with? What's, what, what articles, what how-to stuff would be of interest to you? Those are the sorts of questions you can go and find. If you, you don't need to be doing this on a mass scale to thousands and thousands of people. Just start the ball rolling off with a, a dozen or so of your past customers and clients. You can find something that's really valuable, something that's gonna be really interest to them. It's give them that wow factor at the beginning. It does need to be short, snappy, quick, and easy. Um, if you go and try and offer a free download, and the download is a 100-page report, technical how-to on your product, um, and they've seen it from Twitter or Facebook, it's, it's really tough. You know, if you're, Twitter's 140 characters, as you all know. Facebook is all pictures, and it's all fun and very social. So whatever it is that you're offering, if you're not making it short, snappy, quick, and easy, our patient, our, our, our um, not patience level, our, um, uh, our, our attention span, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> our attention span is shortening and shortening, isn't it? Um, I mean, whereas we used to be able to sit down and read big novels, um, if we don't have anything in 140 characters now, it's too long to read. <laughs> so you've got to think about how whatever you can deliver, is it short, snappy, quick, and easy? And it's got to be fun. We don't do enough fun stuff in business. We really don't. Um, too many people try and take the corporate line all the time. And if you're using social media to build your customer um, growth and, and, and get out there and, and tell people more about what you do, and you're not being fun, it's like it's, people go from social media world, nice warm hot shower, sauna type environment, and they go straight into the cold bath. Whew, they jump straight back out again, and they're not interested. 
So, you, you, you know, you obviously need to know your target audience, but the more fun you can be, if you can make someone smile, okay, maybe not laugh out loud, but if you can make someone smile, they're going to be so much more interested in taking the next step with you, aren't they? Yes, if someone feels good about themselves and makes them smile, they're going to, they're going to take the next step with you. The other thing that's really important, and this is for both sides, this is for you and your customers, is it's got to be automatic delivery. You cannot, for instance, be faffing around with somebody who sign up for something, and you are then, at the end of the day, collecting all the emails and then sending them stuff out and then sitting there at 10 o'clock at night um, forwarding the information onto them, okay? You'll, you'll go mad, you'll go absolutely mad. So it's like Matt was talking this morning about his email marketing systems, it's got to be something that gets automatically sent out to them, 24-7, so whether somebody comes onto your um, opt-in page or whatever it is that you're offering them at uh, 11 o'clock on a Sunday night or on a bank holiday weekend or in the middle of the Christmas, they're still going to get it straight away. Because from the customer point of view, they need that instant gratification. If you've signed up, think about the stuff that if you've signed up for something, even if it's a coupon or a discount code, and you don't get it straight away, you're going, oh, where's it gone? And then it finally pops into your inbox, maybe even three hours or four hours later, oh, I don't remember signing up for that. Yeah, you, you just delete it. So it's got to be instant. It's got to be instant gratification. So where can you do this around your website without being the sleazy sales, um, salesman? Um, Facebook tabs. Anybody, obviously we're now all on the timeline in Facebook. Um, anybody been exploring the new Facebook tabs? <laughs> anybody been doing it? No? Ah. Um, does anybody know what I mean when I say Facebook tabs? Hush, silence in the room. <laughs> you know, okay, Claire knows what they are, but you don't know what to do with them. That's, that's quite often what we have in life, isn't it? We know, what, we know what they are, we just don't know what to do with them. So Facebook tabs, Facebook did away with what we call the default landing page um, back about two, three months ago, where we had the timelines now coming in, and, and a lot of marketers were up in arms. Oh, my goodness me, I can't send people through to a default landing page where I can send, send people an opt-in report so they can put their name and email address. But actually, what Facebook have created, and yes, they've done it for, you know, to service themselves as well, because they're obviously making money on advertising, and hence all the shares now going on the marketplace and all the rest of it. But Facebook have now made it, I think, much more accessible for marketers and for um, business owners to go out there and be more interactive and be more salesy within Facebook without being sleazy. And what you've got on Facebook now is these tabs. So if you go onto your Facebook page, how many of you have got Facebook pages here already? Okay, good. So if you go onto your Facebook page, you'll see there's some tabs, there's these boxes along the top. And I think you've actually got spaces for 9, 12, I can't remember exactly how many you've got. But you've got those tabs there that you can actually create, basically, what's called squeeze pages. Anybody come across that term, squeeze pages? Yeah? Okay. Anybody who hasn't come across squeeze pages, squeeze page is, it's a, it's a very American internet marketing word, to be honest, but what a squeeze page is, is a one page on a website that just squeezes one action out of somebody. Ideally, a name and email address, um, because that's what starts the relationship. So what you've got there is Facebook is giving you the opportunity to have up to 9 or 12, and I can't remember the exact numbers now, um, of what's called squeeze pages. You have got pages that you can direct people to that will have an opt-in option for somebody to say, yes, a free report or a discount code or something of valuable, something that's interesting, something that's fun, something that's short, snappy, and quick and easy for people to sign up for. And the great thing about these tabs is this is where Facebook are being very clever, is that you can link it up to your Facebook advertising campaigns and start sending people to directly through to these pages from your Facebook ad campaigns and start turning your Facebook fans into potential customers. And that's the journey you want to take people. Trying to sell on Facebook, as I said, is really, really difficult. You can set up e-commerce sites on Facebook, and yes, but the, the, the products have to be quite small amounts of money, you know, T-shirts, coasters, you know, they've got to be sort of cheap and cheerful products in the Facebook commerce to, to, to get it to work. Um, I think there's other examples of how people are doing it, but when you're starting out, it's really difficult. And the, and the route to take is to take people onto, through your Facebook adverts, into one of these Facebook tabs, and on that tab, you've got this lovely page with all the added benefits about why somebody should part with a name and email address to get a gift or whatever it is that you're offering. Okay, does that kind of make sense? I make it sound very simple. It's a bit, yeah. It's, come and ask me some questions afterwards if you feel, oh, I really, really would like to have a look at this. Um, there's lots you can do on this. It's, uh, it can be very, very creative. 
in the meanwhile, just have a look at some of the big brands and dive into the likes of the Coca-Colas of this world and all the big brands, Nikes, and just play around and have a look at some of their tabs and get inspired. Um, because a lot of the stuff that they do looks absolutely amazingly designed. And yes, they have huge corporate marketing bu budgets, but actually a lot of the stuff, you can do a lot of this stuff yourself with a, these third party applications. You don't need to be spending lots and lots of money to be able to set these things up. Um, Two minutes. Do you want to get an overrue because I was late going? I just got to get people in for their lunch. Oh, are you? Okay, then. Right, I'll be quick then. I'm almost done actually. Um, Twitter link on your profile. Who sends people to the home page um, on the on your Twitter profile? You've got one link, haven't you, on your profile? Who sends people through to the home page of your website? Yeah. Anybody send anybody anywhere else? So you all send them through. Okay. The danger of sending people through to a home page from the website it is that analogy of from a warm shower into a cold bath. If you go through to a home page on a website and your home page is not absolutely clear about what it is that you offer or why, someone's in from Twitter, they're, 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 going, they're going fast, they're on 140 character mode and they suddenly go through a page, it's like, ooh, too much information, I'm out. Okay? You've got an opportunity for sending people through to a specific landing page that could start off saying, hey, Tweeple, thanks for coming over from Twitter. All right, you might not want to say it in that language to your customers, but that's the sort of, you know, the basis that you want to think of. I'm in Twitterverse. People have gone from Twitter into my um, profile, into a link into my profile, and gone through to my website. So be Twitter-esque on that page. It doesn't have to be part of your site navigation. It can be a standalone web page that sits there. And why not make them a special Twitter offer? Yeah, so they're going from Twitter into a page that says, hello, Tweeple, hello, Twitter people. Guess what? As a, as a valued Twitter follower, you've got a special Twitter code that you can get a discount. Put in Twitter XYZ or whatever it is. You're more likely to get a response from somebody than just sending through to a home page. Make sense? That's a quick and easy thing. You, you could have that up and running very, very quickly. Um, and actually, my Twitter link profile goes through to a Twitter checklist. If you go to at can do can be, you go through on the profile link, it goes through to a special page that actually think it does say hello Tweeple, because I'm a bit cheesy like that. Um, and on it, I offer a free Twitter checklist for small business owners. And that's one of my highest conversion pages on my website, because people click through and there's something about Twitter and away you go, yeah? It's, it's great. Um, LinkedIn, anybody use LinkedIn in their business at all? Oh, few, okay. Um, very quick on this one, LinkedIn gives you three website links on your profiles. What most people do is go for the default option and just says, my website, which is, you know, it's okay. But what you can do, oops, what you can do is you can do the um, default option, uh, not the default option, you can, I can't remember what it is, there's a pull down menu and you can actually change the wording and actually why not send them through to a particular page like I've sent on Twitter. So you've got three options on there. It could be like special offer for LinkedIn users or LinkedIn users click here to find out whatever. Yes, get my drift? So you've got three opportunities there for people to use. Um, remember to optimize your blog posts. And what I mean by this, does anybody blog here? Okay, good, a couple of hands going up. Remember to optimize your blog posts. Again, I see this time and time again. People um, tweet out their blog posts, which is great. People click through from Twitter, read the blog post, and they're back out again. So you've got to think about, when someone goes on my blog post, am I giving them an opportunity to sign up for something? So just look at your blog post. What's on your sign up, opt-in, right-hand menu? What's at the bottom of the blog post? Have you got a pop-up? I know not everybody likes pop-ups, but hey, they work. So optimize your opportunity for giving those um, email addresses when they click through to the blog post. It's a waste opportunity if you don't do it. So, you feeling like this? Or you feeling like that? <laughs> How many of you still feeling a bit like that when it comes to social media? Oh, we can't believe it. Well, look, it is. It's very, 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 very tough. And, I, and it's constantly changing every time, especially with Facebook. You think you've got Facebook cracked. And then they won't go and change the bloody rules. Privacy settings change. You name it. Um, so I think you've just got to remember just to sort of just take it back a step and not get caught up with the shiny, shiny. It's too easy to, you know, um, spend hours of reading Mashable, which is a great social media website, and then suddenly go, oh, my God, they've changed this. I've got to make sure... Like the cookie laws, I saw so many people, um, I mean the cookie laws have to be taken seriously, but I saw so many people spending hours and hours and hours trying to get these opt-in boxes and then suddenly the ICO at the last minute says, oh, I'll tell you what, implied. 
um, don't need to do that. So do, be, do make sure you keep your business goals and objectives at heart and don't get distracted because otherwise you'll end up doing this in social media and giving up. And social media is not something to give up on. It is here to stay. It will evolve, it will grow. By the conf this conference this time next year, we'll probably be talking about something else. Um, I'm sure we will do. Um, Facebook may not even be here. They might have even gone bankrupt, who knows? I don't know, it moves so quickly. But this is where I want people to be because social media technology can work for your business if you know your business objectives. And most importantly, number one, well actually number two things, but you know your target audience and you're giving that target audience an opportunity to share email addresses with you. All right, that's really what you've got to think of in everything you do on social media. Target audience and am I giving that opportunity for the email addresses? All right? So, get your copy right now. Um, Zoe very kindly asked me, oh, it says come and see me at Stand 106. Sorry, this was from a show last week. I thought I changed it on this one. It's because it's gone on that laptop. Um, so, I brought my book along. Finally got it written early this year, shiny, shiny. Um, it's on Amazon as a Kindle and paperback, um, 12 99 but if you come and see me with a little crisp 10 pound note, I will take tattered torn ones as well. I'm not fussy. Um, but come and see me. I will even sign it for you. Can we have an ooh? Ooh. Oh, thank you very much, Thomas. Um, and also as well, um, actually I'll put a, a chance for informants. Maybe I'll give you a training session. So if everybody buys a book today, I'll. If, Rather than do the four months membership, I've got a training session that you can, um, give, I can give you. So all I do is give me your business card and I will send you a link and you can, I think it's the Googability Goog one that I've got on offer at the moment. So it's an hour of my dulcet tones um, teaching you how to Googify your website and make sure that you get found on, um, on Google correctly. So thank you very much. I'm so sorry about the technical problems to start with. But we got well done, there. Karen. Give her a round of applause. Thank you.